Hi guys, networking and content delivery is a category of AWS services in the AWS Management Console. And it includes services such as the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud VPC, also the DNS service, Amazon Route 53. Then we've got AWS Shield for DDoS attacks and Web Application Firewall for protecting us against malicious code. And we've got AWS Direct Connect for connectivity and lots more. So we're gonna cover a few of those services in this section to give you the kind of information you need for the Cloud Practitioner exam. So where does this fit? Again, it's mainly within the technology realm, but as always, there's aspects of billing and pricing. You need to understand how these uh, are priced and how they compare to each other. And then also you need to understand the security elements. So let's get started. A cloud practitioner needs to decrease application latency and increase performance for globally distributed users, which services can assist. So we have users around the world and we want to decrease the amount of latency and increase performance. Now, you may remember from earlier in the course, I gave you a bit of an explanation. So just to recap on that, latency is primarily a function of the distance between the user and the application. So if the user is in one side of the world and the application is in the other, then there's a long distance to travel for that communication. And that gives a little bit of latency, so it slows things down a bit. And that delay can be an issue for some applications. So what can you do? Well, the main thing that you can do to resolve this issue is to literally bring your data closer to your users or your application closer to your users. So how can we do that? Let's look at which services here can help with that. Does the Elastic Container Service enable us to do that? Well, no, yes, you can deploy it in different regions, but you know you don't wanna deploy your application in every region in the world just to get it close to your users. It's gonna get expensive. What about Amazon S3? Again, you can create additional buckets around the world and put your data in it so it's closer to users, but now you've got replicated data and you've got to manage that data. It's gonna get difficult, but you can use Amazon S3 with another service to give you a fantastic solution here. So I'm not gonna give up on that one yet. What about AppStream? No, AppStream's got nothing to do with decreasing latency for global users in this case. And ElastiCache is an in-memory database service. So it does give performance improvements for databases, but it's not gonna help get your content closer to users. So what about CloudFront? So that's exactly what CloudFront does. So CloudFront caches data around the world. So it caches your videos, your files, your images around the world so they're closer to the users. And you can even cache API gateway APIs and Lambda functions as well using Lambda at Edge. So CloudFront's a good one, but we've got to choose two. So Amazon S3 makes the most sense here because S3 can be an origin for CloudFront. That means you put the data in one S3 bucket and then that serves as the origin of the data for CloudFront. So CloudFront takes the data from S3, copies it into the, the edge locations around the world. So I like this answer. Let's click on check. And those are certainly correct. And we've got a diagram here, but I'll show you on a bigger screen. So this is CloudFront. This is how it works. It's a basic view of you know having a few edge locations. Now there are many, many edge locations around the world and many more regional edge caches. This is just to give you a basic idea. But the point is you've got data maybe on Amazon EC2 or Amazon S3. The data gets cached into these locations around the world. So these users could be, you know, these guys could be in Southeast Asia, these guys could be in North America, these guys could be in Europe. And so the data is physically closer to them. So moving on to question two, you should now have a great idea of what edge locations are. So what are they used for? So we should be able to go through and work this out pretty quickly. Are they used for terminating VPN connections? Well, no, that's, that's not what you do with an edge location. Are they used for, by CloudFront for caching content? Well, absolutely. We've just covered that in a diagram as well. So the edge location is one of the locations where the content is cached for CloudFront. So it get, you get that data closer to your users. Is an edge location a public facing API for S3? No, and they're not used for inter-region connectivity as well. So that should be a pretty easy answer. We'll click on check just to be sure. And absolutely that is the correct answer. 
Now let's just have a look to remind ourselves of the global infrastructure. So you've got to remember, you know, you've got your region, that's a geographical area containing availability zones. You've got availability zones, which are one or more data centers, and they're within a region. You've got the edge locations where you cache your content for CloudFront. And then the regional edge cache is also another cache location for CloudFront. And as you saw on this diagram, you have the edge locations closer to the users, and then the regional edge cache is kind of a bit closer to the origin. And there's fewer of these, but they have a bit more space. And then lastly, you've got the global network, which is the you know, low latency private global network interconnecting the data centers, the availability zones, and the AWS regions. The next question asks, which of the following statements are correct about the benefits of AWS Direct Connect? So Direct Connect is a service that you can use to create a private network between you and AWS. So it doesn't use the public internet. So that's a really good use case because the public internet you can't control. So you never know how much latency, how much traffic, how much bandwidth you're gonna get. It can vary you know, from minute to minute. So sometimes you absolutely have to have reliability and predictability. So those are the kind of things you should be looking for when you see Direct Connect. So let's look through these and straight away we can see a couple of things jumping out at us. Increased reliability, predictable performance. Yes, you get that. You won't get that with the internet, but you will get that with Direct Connect. And increased bandwidth, again, predictable bandwidth. This is really gives it away. Sure, you can get high bandwidth on the internet, but is it predictable? It can vary. Whereas with Direct Connect, as long as you're controlling the traffic you put on it, you are able to have a connection that does give you that bandwidth at all times. So straight away, I like those two without even looking at the other options. But let's just check, is it quick to implement? No, so a Direct Connect connection can take several weeks to actually implement. So it's not fast. Is it lower cost than a VPN? No, it's, it's much more expensive than a VPN. Does it use redundant paths across the internet? No, it doesn't use the internet. It's a private network connection. So these are the best answers here. Let's just check those out. And those are correct. So let's go and have a look at a diagram so you can understand Direct Connect better. Now, there's a bit more information than you need to understand here for the exam. But I just want you to take away a couple of points. So we've got the corporate data center, so an on-premises location. And there's a connection going into AWS, and it goes through a Direct Connect location. So these can be um, in many cities around the world. And you might not have a region close to you, but you might have a Direct Connect, connect location close to you. So if you do, then you can connect into that it gets cross-connected into the AWS cage. So this is AWS's networking. So you're going straight into AWS's networking. And from there, you have a private connection over the backbone into the VPN gateway here in your region. So at no point does this traverse the internet. You can break out to the internet for public services, but there's a private connection here in red going straight into your Amazon VPC.